call the youth in two meeting to order of 713 and welcome all our guests. Are there any agenda revisions? Um, I guess my, the board goals here, I assume, are the, um, talk about the goals we just looked at. Right. At the exec, at the um, full board. Okay. We just start talking about right. what do we want to do. Yeah. Yep. Good. Um, and any public comments? We have lots of guests here. <laughs> and I understand you've been here since six. <laughs> oh, I'm, no, really? I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that did not get communicated to you in the right way. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, hello, my name is Leticia. Um, I am a junior at U32. Um, I'm Gabby Calderon, and I'm a senior at U32. My name is <laughs> my name is Devante. I'm a sophomore. My name is Krista D. I'm a teacher at U32. I'm Adrian Wade Keeney. I'm a teacher at U32. I'm Samantha Allen. I'm Gabby's mom, and this is her sister Addison. She goes to Berlin. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Pam DeAndrea, Calis resident. Thanks. And I assume. Maybe I will start with you guys, since you've been here for an hour. <laughs> sure. Just okay, so I have a little um, opening statement. And uh, the Black Lives Matter movement was established four years ago and was built on bringing attention to the violence that was being inflicted on black communities and it was also built on anti-black racism. Throughout the years, it has thrived into focusing on trying to make a world where a black person can be successful economically, socially, and politically. We started BLAM for people of different races to come and talk about the struggles that they have because of their race. We talk about the everyday things that are said to us by ignorant people and the looks that we get because we are not white. Racism isn't the biggest problem at E32, but it is a hidden problem. And a lot of the racism that happens come from people who just don't know. So they don't see the harm that they have done. To hang the, to, um, to hang the flag would be to show that we are invested in supporting the movement and making people aware that the very few not white pe students at E32 also matter. We believe that Montpelier started a big thing by hanging the flag and we would, be, we would like to be a part of carrying that on. It's not about someone's life mattering more than anyone else's. It's about my life mattering the same as yours. I can So stereotypes, they're hurtful, ignorant, and just plain wrong. Being half Mexican, I myself have been a victim of stereotyping. I've heard, is your dad legal um, to, you jumped the border to get here. Hearing racist comments, especially in a building where you're supposed to feel safe, is very discouraging. To me, having our school hang the Black Lives Matter flag shows a starting movement to put an end to the stigmas people are facing every day. It's important that our community accepts each and every person, no matter where you're from or the color of your skin. By hanging the flag, we let the minorities know we are there for them that the people in our school understand that even though you're African American, your hair is real. And just because you're Asian doesn't mean you're automatically super smart in every school subject. Not only being a member of BLAM, but of U32, I truly believe that the Black Lives Matter flag will be a positive contribution and is something we need to see as we step foot on campus to finally stop those ignorant stereotypes. To me, the flag would mean the world because when I first came here, I felt really out of place and just uncomfortable. And I think it signifies a lot of, or symbolizes a lot of bigger things other than what we talk about. And it would make a lot of people like me feel more comfortable when they come here and just feel like they're accepted. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I've been working with Blam, or like I'm part of the BLAM group, which has been a really powerful experience. 
And it's been a really safe space, I think, that we've developed for like people to talk about their experiences. And I've come to really understand and kind of see as I'm much more as I'm present in the hallways that there is an undertone that's like there's a looks, there's dialogue, there's certain things that don't get picked up all the time, but it's very present. And I think this would be a really powerful and positive way to start this conversation and to have this conversation kind of be a present part of U32. Um, for as long as I know, I've been referred to as a half black girl, but that's not my name. You see, instead of seeing me for me, people have seen me by the color of my skin. The first time I felt different from everyone else was when I was in second grade, when I was asked if I was adopted because I wasn't the same skin color as my mother. Through the years, I've been called nigger numerous times by my own classmates. One time in particular was when I was on an eighth grade school trip and nothing was done about it. That made people think it was okay if they said it because they knew that they wouldn't get in trouble. I believe that we have the chance to change this and we can show everyone that it is not okay to dehumanize people of different races because we don't look the same. Um, sometimes when I go places where everyone should feel comfortable and equal, people give me dirty looks just for being different. And I've never been anywhere where sometimes I can walk into a store and grown men can just glare at me for no reason without knowing anything about me. And I hear a lot of things and people don't understand that cultures are different all over the world. And they don't understand that our hair is not much different from theirs. And they think it's okay to ask us inappropriate questions because we're not the same. I didn't come here tonight for this. <laughs> it's breaking my heart. I have an African American little girl, so please do support this before she gets here. So, <laughs> as much as you all should. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's really what you said is very powerful. Does anybody else want to say anything? Uh, I'm curious as to what um, Lucy Shannon, the social justice group here, is, is doing? Yeah, I think that social justice um, and student council, everybody sort of wants the same thing, and it's just more of like a matter of execution, because I think there's definitely a lot of support for it. Um, it's just like you guys came to the board and like asked to hang it, which I think is sort of like the logical next step. So I think that most, sort of like what you said before the meeting, Jody, that like some people wouldn't be in favor, but the vast majority would, so. So the process and the board, if we want to take an action to raise the flag, which is what we need to do, we, it has to be on our agenda. And we are meeting next Wednesday. So my suggestion is that we put it on our action agenda. That way we can discuss it as a whole board. You can come back if you want to. We would love to have you. Or we can carry on the discussion. And then we can make a decision next week. Legally, we can't do it today because it's not here. Does that make sense to you guys? And we would love to have you come back. Um, I'm really proud of you guys for coming. I know it's not easy to do that. And, and since we're meeting at 6 next week, we come at 5. <laughs> and if you come and if you come at 6, we will put you at the top of the agenda. We won't make you wait until wherever it is on the piece of paper. So and just to clarify, that was, that's when like, the whole board will have their dialogue about it. Exactly. When, when we have board com public comments, because it's not on the agenda, we don't engage in discussion. It, it's just the way it is. Yeah. And so we now know, and I don't know if next week's student council or some other groups also want to come and support. You know, it would be great for us to hear from everybody all at the same time so we kind of had all the information and all the people. And I know that's not very long to kind of pull that together, but that's just I a thought. I can see what I can do. It's just a thought. Could I add something since I won't be able to make it to yeah. that meeting? Um, but just as an out, kind of an outsider perspective, I'm not a part of the group, but I am a teacher at U32. So um, 
from like if you look at it from a standards pr perspective or a, or a transferable skill perspective, which a lot of people like to do, um, <laughs> which we would like to do also. <laughs> Great, <laughs> let's do it. Um, you'll notice that I think um, we are really trying at U32 so hard to get the kids to speak on things that they're passionate about, and that's really hard to do. Even in the art room, it's hard to sometimes get somebody to be inspired. And the fact that we have three, but actually even more kids, asking for something that they really believe in, I think is, is something that's um, really important in the transferable skills also in other standards, probably um, global citizenship. I know that it's within the art standards as well. Um, and then the other piece that Leticia mentioned is this, um, this connection with Montpelier High School I find really inspiring. Like, um, we also really encourage U32 to get out in the community and we don't see that very much. And the fact that we would be responding to another school in our community in a positive way I think would be really powerful. So if those two things could be considered. Thank you for making the connection to the standards because I think that is really important. I just had a couple of things. So first, what is BLAM? What does that stand for? I wrote that down. <laughs> it stands for Blacks, Latinos, and many more. Nice. Kind of throwing up a BLAM in there. Is that a U32? Yeah. You, you figured that out. Okay, yeah. thanks. And just one other thing I wanted to say, too, and, and, and this is not uh, listed as a, quote, transferable skill, but the courage that you guys are bringing forward is very wonderful. I mean, it's really, really great for you to come here and speak to us about something that's difficult to speak about. So everybody is more encouraged, but I applaud you guys for coming forward and being courageous. I see a very Thank proud you. mom back there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome to stay. If, oh, did you want to say I, something? Well, I'm I, sorry. I, just, I was curious what, so I'm, in the reports that we got from elementary schools, there's East Montpelier doing every Monday all school lesson where they're working on their PBIS bullying curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. What are we at U32 doing to make this, un what you've experienced that you've shared is unacceptable. You should not experience that. There should be punishment and repercussions for especially the blatant being called the N-word. Uh, what do we do? I mean, are, are there are there social justice? Are we getting together with together as peers and saying, "What you when you do this to me, it hurts this way. Would you want that?" And and peer to peer owning these things. So a lot um, a lot of the work that we do is through TA, and I guess one of the hard parts about that is not knowing for sure that every <laughs> teacher advisor is following through with the curriculum that's provided for that. Um, every school year starts with a bullying and harassment two days in the callback period, so that's two 30-minute slots. Um, there is an executive committee of students, and Lisa LaPlante heads that up. And basically, that's the students from all of the clubs, so if you don't have an, a person represented there, I would recommend um, reaching out to Lisa. Um, they are, they've been working with the civil schools curriculum, which we got last year when we had a guest speaker come in. He did a leadership training for about 40 students and then did um, a whole school assembly throughout the day. Um, we have the curriculum from there and that group is kind of sifting through it and trying to decide what's gonna be useful to try to share out. They had intended to share monthly in callbacks stuff to do. I don't believe that's happened yet. Um, we certainly have some other curriculum that we use in like health classes. Um, students can report. Students don't always report what happens and sometimes um, what I understand is that things get reported, we try to deal with it and things get worse before they get better. And so that makes it hard to, to report. Um, we have had several um, reports of bullying or possible bullying or harassment this year that we've investigated fully um, there have been some fi findings, um, and there are responses which sometimes include restorative circles, 
but everybody needs to be safe to come to that process. So sometimes it includes other educational aspects. Can I respond as well? As far as our group goes, um, Patricia is really been leading this group. Like, the group has really has started this year and has been pretty quiet. And our goal is really to have a present voice. And the students have all been talking about hoping to create some way, some sort of where they speak to all the classes and have this moment where they talk about what it really feels like and express like so because that's when things become real, right? And like and to the friends who like think certain things are okay, that it's actually not like they really have these voices present. That's the goal as we move forward. Is there similar stuff going on with the LGBT community mm -hmm. um, in the school and like a, a joke to one kid like, oh, you're gay, how much that hurts. Uh, Absolutely, like and so that's actually so been that's, going on longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glam is the um, gays, lesbians, and many more. Okay. And they've been working together much longer. They have a lot more um, work that they've done with students and with faculty to hear those comments. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, I would say the majority of reports are around bullying and harassment are more about that. Um, I don't think we're hearing mm -hmm. from the majority of what might be going on with these. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really hard to speak up to your friends. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the friends yeah. that are doing it. Right, because yeah. a lot of situations are with friends. Yeah. Um, last year we also had a, an issue around harassing language about race and ethnicity um, in the eighth grade and we brought in the Peace and Justice Center and took 38th mm -hmm. graders and they met with um, three trainers from Peace and Justice. And some of those students were involved and some of those students were ju we just saw as leaders and they worked through um, some stuff. So any ideas are welcome. Um, we've been wholly supporting this group. Um, and I appreciate that they came forward and were so courageous today. Yeah, but too. absolutely, we can, we can always do more. I feel like you've planted a seed. Right. That, you know, we're starting and it's going to grow and blossom and yeah. hopefully bring really good things. So I encourage you to come back. It will be on our agenda next Wednesday. And we can do it right at 6 o'clock or 5 after or something. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, and we will. You're absolutely right. <laughs> if you don't come back, we will. Jonathan. Uh, I, I don't uh, certainly can't say that I have the, you know, the, uh, curriculum, the, the studies, the whatever the term is, for the book of studies, right? All the classes that are offered. Okay. But one thing that's been on my mind for a while is, you know, what if any classes do we offer in ethnic studies? Mm -hmm. What do we offer in terms of Native American studies? What do we offer in terms of, you know, those things I think really need to be looked at because that's all part of American history. And to really, I think, have a full appreciation, or at least more of an appreciation of the entirety of American history, which isn't always so great. Um, those things have to be looked at and talked about, mm -hmm. honestly and frankly, mm -hmm. because many things that happened here were not so great right. um, for Native peoples and other people. So, you know, that's part of people growing up and learning about other people or people that don't look like them, particularly in such a white state that we have here. So that's a really important thing, I think. Yeah, I also would like to say sort of what you brought up. Like, as a student, I'm in an AP history class, and really all we learn about is like white people. And I feel like that's definitely a problem because that's only a small part of our history. And I remember um, when the Montpelier kids raised the flag, they sort of talked about like how they didn't feel represented in their education. Um, so I just feel like some steps could be made to be more inclusive, especially in history, because it wasn't just all about white people. And I think part of the issue with that is that the, you have two US history classes, but the AP curriculum that you have to know for the test doesn't support that, like doesn't support the more comprehensive view of history. And so any time that we take to do that in class is taking away from the test prep time. So that's, I mean, that's a bigger issue that mm -hmm. it expands past this school, but. That is such a insightful Yeah, it's a bad one, yeah. <laughs>
We do. We did have um, two new courses proposed and put forward for social studies. One was uh, country, um, China, focus on China for a semester and current events. Current events got enough students to run, and China did not. Um, but I think I would advocate for our student groups to recommend yeah. possible new courses in the future and take part in that process. I think there's a whole lot you guys can do Absolutely. You know, once you get going and you get the support. It would be very powerful. And this is a perfect time, kind of in history, to do it. Mm. I agree. Um, because my 15th birthday, I had a quinceanera, and that's a big celebration with my culture, and none of my friends knew what that was, and you know, I had a couple of snarky comments about like, how that's too much for a 15th birthday when, you know, that's what my family does. We've been way before my family, so I feel like it is important for our community to be educated on those different cultures. I have something to add on. Um, I love your idea of adding classes because I'm mixed with Native American and African American and I would love for people to be educated about things and I feel like it would help just clear up a lot of things. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yeah, hi, um, Pam DeAndre again. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just going to extend my comment from the last uh, meeting previously and just I need to know why if a student leaves um, the school because they're not able to attend because their needs have not been met, why I really appreciate you talking to me last time, why it's not number one within the board's jurisdiction to make any decisions, and number two, why I can't be on the agenda and put go into an executive session. I, I, that was the language I was asking for in an email to Adrian, what that language is. The language I got back was that a child can get um, special education services if they are enrolled here. I know, I'm, I know that very clearly. That's not the language I was asking for. It, my question is why cannot we further discuss an issue like that in executive session, and why can't I go on the agenda, and why can't we just, and this is for any kid, not, not mine, just this is for any child. And um, if that's the case, if the board cannot discuss that, this says to me that the staff and administration can do anything or not do anything for a child, <coughs> and if the parents have to take the child out of school because of that, then we can't talk about it to the board. That doesn't make sense to me. And I really need clarification on that and why. And I pay taxes here. My taxes support the staff here. And I would like some oversight of that staff, whether my kid is here or not, because I live in this district and my children have tried to go to, my child has tried to go to this school. My other child is coming to this school and goes to Cal. So, I, I think I deserve that, and I'm not on the agenda. You say you can't talk about people not being on the agenda. I asked to be on the agenda, but I'm not. So tell me how to handle this. So as a school board, our job is to carry out the policy of the set the policy of the school and carry out the policy of the school. Individual student situations go through the administration, and it's my understanding that the Vermont laws and procedures for what to do with your child weren't followed completely. So it's not a board issue. You know, you can go back to the administration and figure out with them, but right now it's not a board issue. I disagree because I went to the administration. They backed up the staff. I went to the superintendent, backed up the staff. I went to the state. I followed the procedures. The state did not give me a voice. I'm coming to my board. I don't know why that's not a board issue. I'm coming to my board. It's my understanding that those Vermont 
procedures and statutes weren't actually followed. That's a misconception. So, so my suggestion is to go back to the administration that was dealing with those procedures and for you two to figure out where the procedures fell apart and for either of you to figure that out. And that, it, it's, I, I don't know what to do, Adrian, because that's not That's my happen. suggestion. It's not gonna happen. My suggestion is you go try. Because my understanding Adrian, is those procedures weren't followed. And I, I, I can't say anymore. I feel Donna, badly for you, but I suggest you go back and try again. She's okay. sitting in the back of the room. Kelly, this, I, I, I don't, it's I don't not know. okay. I'm, I'm really sorry, but we are a board and we can't deal with individual students. That we don't, it, it's this a whole. This is where my problem is. Let's not, let's not even talk about this individual student. Pam, I'm what not, do you do? I'm not gonna discuss it anymore. What do you do, Adrian? If something is done on the staff level that's not okay for a kid, what do you do? My understandings were that the Vermont laws and the procedures weren't followed. And so you need to go back and figure out where that process fell apart and put it back together again. And I, I don't even have more information than that. I don't know where they fell apart. But you won't even talk to me. That's what I'm. That's what I'm having a problem I, with. I, we You're we spent your we spent half an hour I know. with you last meeting, and I'm not going to talk about it anymore, Pam. We have spent a lot of time, and my suggestion is to go back and figure out where those procedures fell apart, and work from there. That's that's all I can say. Try it. Okay. So, approval of minutes, consent agenda, March 7th, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? We'll move that. And a second? And two, uh, thank you. two revisions. Thank you. you ready, Lisa? So, um, 4.2, I think the last two paragraphs of that section are out of order. I think they should be switched. People agree with me on that? So they would start with the motion. Sorry. Okay. Um, 4.2? 4.3, sorry. Oh, 4.3, I, okay. I missed it. 4.3. It continues on to another page. So the you're saying thing. motion for all the move to adopt should be before Scott Thompson suggested it. Exactly. Because that approval happens in that Scott Thompson paragraph. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I think those two paragraphs would be swapped. So wait, sorry. Can you tell me? I think the last paragraph that starts in motion yes. should be the second to last paragraph and go before the paragraph that says Scott Thompson. I wasn't even connecting with that. I'm sorry. I, was, I got it. Good. That should be the first paragraph, right? The motion? The mo it starts with a motion. And then you go into the resolution and support. I'm, I'm a little confused by why it says so moved at the end of that first paragraph. No. Yeah, I think, I think they've been edited. That wasn't how I... So I think Krista might have, might have made some edits too. So. By mistake? Yeah. Maybe we didn't Possibly. vote on the motion. Oh, no, I mean, sorry, that doesn't make sense. It was moved. So, Carmen, we need to adopt and share this resolution as discussed. So, I think we had all this discussion before we made a motion. We, I handed out the East Montpelier and the Montpelier okay. um, drafts. Do you remember that? Yeah. We handed those out. We looked at those and discussed them. That's true, because my motion was based on our discussion of what was included in the statement. But, but there's nothing in that, in that Scott Thompson paragraph that came before the motion. It suggested that student involvement with this type of action is ideal. I, 
I think I think we should reverse those, switch those two paragraphs, and, and okay. strike the so moved. I don't think that means anything. And then after he made the motion, we suggested some edits. Yeah. Yeah. You know what happened? He did some edits, and then later on. After we did, because remember you did them yeah, while well, we were moving on, during, on we were in the meeting. About it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and we came right. back to it. After and then that. we came back, but that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay. You get that, Lisa? So if we're just switching those paragraphs and taking out the so move. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Although for we do want to acknowledge the fact that we voted on the motion. So do we have that? <laughs> that's not in here. Agenda? That's not in here. That, that's so moved. I think oh, places no. in place of. Oh, oh. We voted to oh, accept. Voted. Yeah. Got it. So that should be at the end of this. Got the motion carry. Yeah. So just instead just of so moved, it should say motion carry. Yes. Okay. Motion carry. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So then I have one other one, which is uh, near the end, nine point zero. Okay. The, the second paragraph mm -hmm. where we're talking about the um, mm -hmm. dam issue, mm -hmm. Kari Bradley stated that the board, no, it should read, Kari Bradley stated that the superintendent okay. intends to put yeah. out a report. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Anything else? Scott? Yes. I, I was wondering about 1.3. Um, did anybody else feel uncomfortable about the specific mentions of uh, when Pam, uh, when the minutes talk about her child or, um, I was thinking if, if we could edit out references to a specific child, if that would be a good thing or, or does it matter? Because of, even though she said it. Even though she said it, it's in our minutes. And Spoke about special ed laws in Vermont. How about if we just take out her child as prevented children from meeting eligibility requirements? Yeah. I mean, um, but there were statements in the public yeah. forum on their recorded. I don't yeah. OK. If, if everybody's OK with it, that's fine. I was just you know, okay. wanted to. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you're giving your consent if you come into a public forum and you speak. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you know, okay. our, our concern would be. No, there are rules of personal yeah. And we certainly can't and, say it. And there's nothing right. here saying that we spoke to that. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm satisfied. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for thinking about that. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Do you guys want to do your report first? We're, we're good. Yeah. You're good? Yeah. You're here for a while? We're not going to be a really long time. We've had the, ex we've had the excitement for the evening. Um, so discussion, response, excuse me, response to the AOE regarding the Act 46 questions. So we got in our full board, it wasn't even in the packet, it was kind of attached to it, um, an addendum that addresses the um, special ed task force report and then the efficiency study and it just goes into a lot more detail about the kinds of things that Washington Central has done to address those two. I guess in that half hour meeting they weren't able to give specifics about them and they, as Matt said, they felt badly about that. <laughs> oh, oh, you're here? Oh, good. Delighted. Say, when I Thank you, Scott. When I read Matt's recollection, <laughs> when I read Matt's recollection, read it. I read it. I read it. And I read Matt's recap of that meeting. And the, that when I got to that part where they posed, I was like yelling in my garage. I was like, tell them the reason we haven't done anything about those things yet is because we've been working on that for years. <laughs> if, if we weren't working on this, we would have two years of energy to put into those other things. So I'd like to see that get communicated to you. <laughs> um, so the question is, can we pass this so that they can submit it to the DOA tomorrow um, as part of our report, kind of an addendum to the report? And Scott is the right person to ask the question, um, too, if you have any questions. Yeah, I think Matthew did a great job with it. 
Yeah, it was very clear. Yeah. It has some help. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I need some writing. So if there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I'm just going to move to the action agenda to accept this response to the AOE. May I move it? You absolutely may. <laughs> Scott moved and a second. Second. Jonathan? More discussion? No, sir. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that motion carries. Next on the agenda is board goals. I turned around and looked at all the sticky notes on the charts in the full board meeting. Community engagement, investigating policy governance, board monitoring had the top three by far. Mm -hmm. And then school safety had a smattering. Mm -hmm. And there was one other that I couldn't really make well, out. We'll get you the totals. Yeah. Um, community engagement, we certainly have as a, a board goal for U32. Um, board monitoring, we certainly have as a goal for U32. Investigating policy governance hasn't really come up right. in our goals. Right. Um, but I don't know if there's any discussion, anybody want to comment about those three in general, and then we can figure out when we're going to meet as a board to have a retreat to set our goals, hopefully, which reflects some of this work, too. Can I just, we're talking, so we're talking about the WCSU board goals. Yeah. Right? Not this board. Yeah. Right? I am in favor of a lot of things on this list that were not necessarily itemized on this. I couldn't put stickers beside them. It, they seem like things that you make a to-do list and you start checking the boxes. Yeah, like I agree. You know, delegate acceptance of all grants to the superintendent or um, reduce WCSU's and U32 policy committees to one. Establish common policies. Done. Why Some of those are done already? Yeah, I mean, like a lot of those, but but why? When I look at the student handbook for East Mount Pillar Elementary, why is it different at Doty and <clears throat> different at Romney? Why, why are they creating are their own wheels? Years? Why aren't so. they the same handbook? Anyway. Why would my student be treated differently or have to um, have a policy like? follow a policy at one school, and if I go to the other school, it would be different. So, <laughs> how do I go here? Sorry if I'm so naive. <laughs> no, you're, well, I've been there. Um, Give us some history. Yes. There, I'm trying to think about the right words to use. Scott, well, I'm gonna need your help. The history um, has so, been. The history has been, so let me say this. When I, it's, this is, it's hard to believe, because I'm just astonished. I can't believe I'm in my sixth year right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like, how'd that happen? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it just it happened. Um, when I applied, the tagline, and I knew this before I even applied to the position. This is the the there were two things that were really strongly said to me. We are a loose confederation of schools, and I said, okay, I hear you. I wondered in my head, has there been positive experience from working together? And one of the things that um, Act 46 showed was if, if board members needed to get to know each other. I assumed too much that there was already that knowing, but there really wasn't. That's what, one of the things I took out. And Scott, you and I have agreed, I think, on that yeah. pretty, pretty strongly. Um, it was a big learning. Like, I wish I could put us all in for like social mixers every other month because I think that still needs to happen more. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm astonished at the micro level we look at differences amongst our five towns. And micro might be too big. It's really small. Like, I don't see the differences between the schools. No. Um, we're very homogeneous in Vermont, and we're extremely homogeneous. I've worked in three supervisory unions, and this is the most together commonalities across five towns that I've had in those three. It's been Lamont South, so Stone, Morrisville, very different demographics. And then in Hardwick, where the poverty rate was 95% in the town of Hardwick for the kids in the school. We don't have anything like that here. So. And they had nine different boards with seven different structures. <laughs> so it was like, wow. Um, 
so I think that that we really laser focused on our differences instead of our similarities. I have seen through Act 46 that some of that's come out. So because of that, there's a desire to have our own voice. The only ones that can, I haven't been, there's nothing that's been explicit. One of the things that I've been championing in the past couple months as we've been talking about work to do together is, and Matthew reiterated it for me again tonight, so I didn't have much to say when he asked me if I wanted to talk. I said, you said what I've been saying, which is, I'm not so considered about the what is it that we're gonna to do together, it's that we're together on something. And what I have implicitly, so that's what I want to say, I want to use that word, intentionally using that word, implicitly heard from the boards was, and not so much from the boards, but individual board members, you gotta let us have our own voice and do things our own way. I don't think that's good for students. And I've been clear about that, I think. I hope I've been clear about that. And, and I want to allow that, I mean, I think the only way we're going to do that is to get there is, is to talk about that. And it's going to be through community engagement. I wish there was a faster way, because I think every day that we don't do that, we're losing chances for kids. And that tears up my, my belief system but I don't see any other way for Washington Central. When I first came in, what I was thinking was it was gonna be an eight to 10 year process to get us there. And that's what I've seen in other communities that were started when, you know, they said we're loose confederations of school systems, but it was saying, and you know, it was doing the work. What happened, didn't expect it to happen in the grand scheme of things, was Act 46 came along and forced us to have the discussion a little faster than we were ready to have it because we had had those experiences of working together. Well, and we've had, I mean, this is a, it, <clears throat> this is part of a, of an even bigger discussion than even than Act 46, and it took um, two years just to get through that. Mm -hmm. So, um, unless uh, oh, you, you want to stick around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so where we are in policy, though, is we, each school used to have their own policy committee. And they each either wrote their own policies or took the VSBA policy and changed them. Mm -hmm. We have now moved to at least one policy committee for the whole supervisory union. So we've made progress. Yeah, and I asked, and, and I asked a question to the executive committee last, last week. I said, I need to know, and I think the policy committee needs to know, where does the entire supervisory union board stand on common policies? Because I, if, if we're not there, that's fine. That's an okay answer. We're not gonna, we're gonna common the required policies and that, that's fine. But I think they deserve to know what is their work as a group. And that's on our June agenda. And that's now on our June agenda. Okay. But, and you know, the board two years ago, and Kari helped me with this, but I think the clear message was, you know, work on the pieces that are in the operations, but leave the governance to the boards. The and the efficiency study. Efficiency yeah. study. Yeah. And some of that is, frankly, being able to say, there's a different way of doing work around here. And I need some support from the boards to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. Because it means changing people's jobs and what they do. Here's how I would summarize it. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't been around as long as you guys, but there is a long history and cultural reasons why we have traditionally thought of ourselves as independent operators within this SU. And that's slowly changing, and meetings like tonight show us how far we've come, but then you think about it, there is just so much more work to do, and while we can feel good about the progress we've made, I share your impatience at times, saying, you know, let's, let's move faster, but also recognize that it, you know, we're a bunch of people with all with tradition and culture that is, it takes time. And but I, if, you, if you look, you look at what we agreed to tonight, there is a lot of collaboration there. Yeah, and, and you know, if you follow that Act Forty Six process for the two years, a lot of that came out. And instead of being kind of 
an undercurrent, at least now people know where people stand and where boards stand. Um, and we're kind of where we are now. And there is an agreement that we need to move forward together, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. And I think as we move forward, a lot of these things will be able to be taken care of. But we have to agree to kind of do that. And I think we set a really good model for doing that. And, you know, I've always felt that we can try to lead the supervisory union. And we've done that. The School Quality Committee and Learning Outcomes is a great example of a place where, you know, board members here were committed to that. We as a committee worked on it, we as a board worked on it, and then we reached out to the other boards. And eventually it took, I don't know, a couple yeah, years. I, I think the leadership has, it's come from other places too, but this, the U32 board owes a lot of credit for the leadership. And I actually watched that happen with Hazen and, and, and Hardwick, you know, when the, the Hazen board said, hey, wait a minute, we represent a bunch, we represent three of the towns here. We should be talking about how we work together. Mm -hmm. That started carousels, started policy governance, started what are we doing together? And you know, so maybe that's a U32 goal that we can start to figure out how to provide leadership to move that way. Right. Um, you know, how do we collaborative work or something? I'm just going to write it here for a thought and keep that in mind. And I want to make sure I'm really clear. I mean, there's been, I agree with Kari and Adrian about the progress. There's been big progress. But there's a long way to go. Yeah, but I just, I take the story of Orange Southwest that Brent came and told us for many years. He's come here a couple times to this board. They took 10 years. Mm -hmm. They took 10 years to have those, and they were very disparate. So why don't we think about a date for a board retreat, um, and Bill, maybe you can help us with that. Do you still want to go with our traditional, we usually go at the end of May. We've done April, we've done May. Have we done April? Yeah, yeah. we have. Uh, might be the end of April that you're thinking. Well, we May. can do the last. May's better. May's better? I'm going to, I'm going to Europe. Well, we better not do April then. <laughs> You're going to have to tell us Can I go to Europe with him? <laughs> so the last Wednesday in May is not a full board meeting, right? Right now it's penciled in as an executive committee, but it's a fifth Wednesday, so I do not know why that is and why it's not on the 23rd. Well, then we could do the 23rd. If so 23rd might be the day, yeah. May 23rd? Sure, great. So that's the fourth Wednesday. That's the fourth Wednesday. That's, yeah. Okay. Sister's birthday. Whose so birthday? A, my sister's birthday. Oh. So it says on this calendar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's my grandmother. knew that it's too. My, it's she my grandmother's birthday. Well, you want to get her out of Bozeman. We got to get her from so Bozeman. So that'll be our retreat. We typically have done it at my house. That is fine by me. Um, and we usually meet, we try to meet from six to eight. We get dinner and then we sit down and kind of talk about how we've done, where we're going, some new goals, and then I kind of pull it all together and bring it to the June meeting. Although that'll be, oh no, it'll be two weeks away. I might be able to yeah, it's two weeks away. I might be able to pull that together in June or August. Okay? And by then, the supervisor union won't know anymore though. We kind of have these dots to work with. But you'll have typed that all up for us, right? Oh, yeah, the dots are going to get done soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I say that, and Krista's probably. Yeah. I'm sure she'll do it. Reports to the verbal, sorry, to the board, Central Vermont Career Center. Can I help in any other way? I'm going to no. step out. I just want to we're stop and check in. No, we're all set. We, this is going to be really quick, actually. Students! Yeah. We love having you here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Since we last met, um, we, there was a walkout schedule. It, we had a snow day. <laughs> How disappointing um, was, I was that? So oh, I know. And then we had another walkout, which was um, not with the national one. <laughs> <laughs> but it was with Montpelier. So we did try to work with Montpelier. Yeah. Yeah. Who oh. else wrote a snow day? <laughs> and I think that's been really good for opening up discussion in the school. 
Um, just like in the atrium today, I heard a lot of kids having like really good and respectful discussions about gun control, about school safety, and sharing their different opinions and actually listening to each other, which was really nice to see. Um, I know a lot of classes have talked about it, um, but that's it's definitely still on the minds of everyone, even though it happened last week. Um, so, yeah, and there's going to be a callback tomorrow for further dialogue. So I think it's specifically, Jody, right, it's geared at the kids who, like, didn't really walk out, right, to, like, get their voices heard, anyone or is it anyone? Anyone? Okay. And having a respectful dialogue. Okay. But, yeah, that's, it's sort of like Shannon said, it, like, started an important conversation, and I have noticed this. Um, and then we also had Teen Health Week last week, um, which was sort of organized by our health teacher, Meg Falvey. And um, each day was sort of a different aspect of health. So it was physical, sexual, environmental, substance abuse, sort of, and then um, like mental and emotional health. Um, so that involved a lot of like callbacks um, that were like focusing on a specific area. So like there was one about like somebody who um, had been addicted to some drug and they sort of like shared their experience. And then there was also um, like sexual health callbacks and it sort of just a lot of it, I think, actually, like, destigmatized some of the issues that our community is facing, like substance abuse and, like, mental health problems. So I thought that was pretty successful. Yeah. Um, spring sports started, which it seems like there's no gap between sports seasons anymore, <laughs> which I think means our teams did well in winter. But, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, and next week we have a, some students have a three-day week because we have SVAC testing. But 11th graders don't have to do it anymore, which is good, but I'm also a little bitter about it because I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, and then our last thing um, is that I mentioned last time at the board meeting that we're sort of working on this like restorative panel type thing. Um, and we had our last meeting, was it last week? Mm -hmm. or was, yeah, it was last week. Um, and it was sort of our first like, okay, like we thought of this idea, now let's put it into practice. And I think that it went really well. Um, and it was effective and everybody was respectful and I think that it sort of opened the door to a new way of thinking about problems in our school. Um, so that was really... Can you describe what it was? Well, like, I can't talk too much about it because it's, like, confidential, but, like... But in general, I mean, was there an issue and a panel was... I'm not, I just don't yeah. have a vision of what it looks like. We threw the students into the fire that said they were interested in this and provided a scripted opportunity to deal with an issue that occurred in the school. And so the, someone presents the issue. Um, yeah, the people involved present the issue and then the panel, the panel helped to come up with um, how to resolve it. And the, the person who was having the problem was part of the discussion of the resolution too. So I thought it was a good way to work that out. And were people happy in the end or satisfied that justice had been served? I don't know if that's Yeah, the I right think word. that everybody involved felt like we made progress, so that's a start. Mm -hmm. Everybody signed the agreement. Mm -hmm. So that's actually our first restorative circle that required a signed agreement. Because it was more formal than any of the ones that we've been doing. And the agreement with partially agreeing not to talk about it outside of that room, which is like a main thing. And then also um, just sort of talking about like the next steps, because you can talk about a problem all you want, but unless you're going to figure out how to solve it, then you're kind of not really doing the most effective thing. So we sort of proposed like a step by step plan um, with a script, right? Was there a script? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then. And will you come back to it in a week or a month or, or you're done? You hope that that so, plan gets carried out. We intend to debrief as a group because we didn't have time in that um, callback. We went over as it was. Um, and talk about that process and if that's what we want to move forward with for our student panel. Um, it will come back if someone violates the agreement. Oh, OK. And anyone can choose to come back if they, um, if they think there's something more to discuss as well. So yeah, that's all we have. That was a lot. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Any comments for me? Thank you very much. We really appreciate hearing from you.
Finance Committee? Oh, Administration, I'm sorry. Skipped right over you guys. <laughs> Just because Steven's not here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I wanted to add that I don't remember in the calendar what whether this was before the last meeting, but um, Lear was also presented in a theater. was amazing. Um, one act and went on to not win this year, but many of the actors and, and Carlson um, who basically wrote the production and directed it, won some awards um, at the One Act Festival. So amazing, amazing. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Uh, the next newsletter will be going out on Monday. So anything that needs to go in it should be to me by Friday. And I already have written down okay. the, the next forum we'll get that the we'll start time. Yeah. And Scott, uh, not Scott, Stephen was going to give me stuff about the implementation plan, but I'm not going to write it by Friday. I've got parent teacher conferences tonight, so I mean uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, so and that's, that's not going to happen. We're just working on that, so that's not going to happen either. Okay. We'll, work um, for, we'll work on May. But perhaps we can. I wonder if we want to talk about the proposal that's going to be in the next meeting and allow people to come, or just talk about it afterwards. So maybe it'll be on the May one. I, what's what's really nice about this newsletter format is that I can edit it after it's been sent yes, out, yes. <laughs> so I can add stuff later. The majority of people see it on the first day. I don't know how many people go back. Yeah. Um, I would love to say that that's going to be on the agenda next one. You know, the black light, the Blam group came, suggested that you. I'll draft that in. The, Run it by you. Okay. okay. I just, I know it's not going to happen by Friday. So I'm not going to yep. pretend to say this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, and speaking of reparative, um, I have actually been invited. Some of our incidents that happen in school get recorded outside because we're mandatory reporters. Mm -hmm. And sometimes investigations happen outside that lead to other situations for students. Um, some of those have led to the Montpelier Reparative Panel hearings. And so I've been to four different hearings in the last month um, regarding our students and stuff that happened. And so it's just been an interesting process and also to be able to see how it's similar to what we do here. And, and I feel like the restorative practice here really supported our students that were placed into that process there. And do they call you to give information or to listen or to be part of a um, panel? All of the above. Not really part of the panel, but to provide information, um, speak to impact, and to also advocate. It depends on the situation. Questions? Finance Committee? School Start Time Subcommittee? I think we've heard. We heard from us. We yeah. did. April 11th. April 11th. 6 to 8 o'clock. 6 to 8 here. right here. Right here in this room? Yes. And you think you have 25 people or so? Yeah. We, um, and we got contact information from everyone. Great. So we have, we're going to email, we can email contact uh, what happens at the next one. Because some people were there and said, I can't come to the next one and captured their feedback. And a new sound we made the front page of the Times Argus above the fold. Our salary. No, our school start time. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, I know. Oh my goodness! I don't yeah. like it. It's not printed online. I yet. thought it was down below. <laughs> no, was I, it up top? It was up top. Oh, yeah. I, too. I did see it. It was. I was surprised. The print edition. Yeah. yeah, it was a print edition. Oh, on, on, on the website. On the rare day it it's gets delivered into our mailbox. A couple times a week we see it. Um. Action agenda. We have approved the response to the AOE. We have a leave of absence request on page seven from Kate McCann, who has been invited to participate in the Albert Einstein Distinguished Educators Fellowship, <coughs> which sounds incredibly prestigious. Is it? Yes. <laughs> sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Yes. And it sounds like Stephen supported her in applying to that. Yes. Um, Absolutely. So a motion to accept Kate's leave of absence. I'll move it. Scott in a second. Second. Karen. This reminds me of what you want teachers to do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We've talked about this. 
Do um, you guys have any concerns? Is it in keeping with our policies? No. Uh, yeah. no, no concerns. And I have to give her a lot of credit for offering all the support she's willing to mm -hmm. offer, you know, to come in and help someone get started and work with them in the summer. That is above yeah. and beyond, which isn't surprising. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. We have a motion for two resignations um, from Jillian Thomas, who is a Spanish teacher, and from Glenn Houston, who is a social studies teacher. Can I comment? Yeah, can we? I'm um, just very sad. For her, uh, Jillian. Jillian. My Jillian. son, Jillian. Jillian, sorry. Son has, it's his favorite teacher, his favorite class. He, I can't believe how much Spanish he knows. I'm really sad. And I'm very sad about Glenn. We don't have any more information. Um, so is there a motion to accept both of those? Can we not? <laughs> <laughs> I've tried that before and it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, I guess we approved a budget that has 0.7 Spanish teacher and there's not a full-time equivalent. Reading in between the lines, that's the reason. Is this a he or she? I'm not she, she is leaving? She has also accepted a job in South America. Yeah. Oh. So that's exciting, too. So a motion to accept these resignations with sadness? And gratitude. And gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. Um, second? I'll second. And Carl, any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. And do we have the board orders signed? Yep. yep. Is there a motion to accept the board orders? So I move. Karen and uh, second? I have a question. Let's just get a second. Yep, that's fine. I'll second. Carl, go ahead. Ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not really, it's just sort of informational for myself. I noticed the line item for the Green Mountain Valley School for the Alpine Ski Program, and I realized I don't know anything about our Alpine Ski Program. I didn't know it was that. Um, and that's a pretty big chunk of change. We're looking at 5500 bucks. it looks like, per, I'm guessing per year, mm -hmm. 55000 6, bucks a year. Um, and I'm curious what the participation is like, what the program looks like. It's a good question. I just yeah. don't know anything about it. They used to practice at Sugarbush on Sundays. And the coaches would come and coach them. This is when my kid was here, so that was a long time ago. It's still, the, I, I know it's still Sugarbush. Yeah, um, yeah that's where Green Mountain Valley School. Yeah, goes, and yeah. so they contract the coaches through Green Mountain Valley School. Yeah, and that's what the money goes to is to pay the coaches. Right. And I don't know if they pay. I know each kid has to have their own ski pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not so paying we're not for the ski. We're not, we're not paying covering that. Part. that. I, I take that back. We weren't. I shouldn't, I don't know that you that's don't know now. There may be a cost associated with competitions, just like there is for yeah. Nordic Anything skiing. Else, yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I do don't know that we have said no a lot. How many, oh. how many athletes do we have? Going? Do you guys have a huge huge less than 10. Less than, less than 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Like, I think between five and seven kids. I mean, I think honestly, for the most part, most people don't know what exists. Like, like it's one of those things that you hear through the grapevine and then like join. They don't know you that it exists. Really you and report. you have to have all of the equipment, maybe, I don't know. But yes. like, you have to have yeah, a lot. You used to have to have a lot. It's just like, that's I that's sort of my next question is, what's the socioeconomic cross-section of that group yeah. of people? I'd be kind of there curious to know more about that. And it was a much big, when my son was on it, there were probably 20 kids. Better so. not. We can come back with more information yeah. next time. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Can you usually give me the amount of the board orders? I was going to do that when we got distracted. Um, $87,466.45. Okay, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Future agenda items? Just a comment on the request to buy the flag. I guess. I'm curious if they meant like every day, all day, if that's the request. But I, I personally support it, but I, I think we have to think about what is the criteria for approving such a request. 
So when the next group comes and says, I think we should fly this flag, how are we going to evaluate it? It's a, it's a pretty tricky yeah. question, actually. Yeah. No, that's, well, and that's our job. We've even kind of touched on that a little. You know, part of the, when we thought this might come up at previous meetings, we, we had discussed the fact that, you know, Montpelier flying that flag, it was at the end of two, week, two years of hard work with, with the program in school before they put the flag up. Yeah. Um, I would be curious to know if they, either the superintendent or the principal at Montpelier High School, if they've instituted some kind of policy dealing with just that question. What if on the next request? Could because they may, invest in, they, may well, have, yeah, or, they may have something. Did this request well. come to you guys at all? Yeah, it went to Stephen. And he said take it to the board? Yes. Yeah. To present it to us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, not to, he wasn't expecting. To make the decision about flying a flag in front of the school, he felt like a, that was a board decision. Yes, and, and this is basically just sort of sensitizing us so that we can ask the kind of questions that Kari is asking. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they knew that tonight, mm -hmm. that we wouldn't act on it. Am I right about that? They asked, and I, I told them that I didn't think you could act on it tonight, okay. but that you would take the information and that um, you would certainly appreciate hearing from them. Yeah, okay. Um, I'd be happy to volunteer to call Michelle Braun and ask her. Carl, that would be their great. Thinking process was that would be terrific. And I also have the um, what the, those students presented to the Montpelier board. It was in some publication. I kept it. It's in my bag because it was very thorough and very thoughtful. Uh -huh. And it did go through kind of all of the academic piece, which I'm really glad Adrian yep. mentioned briefly. That it wasn't just this. We want to find the flag, value to right? That. Yeah. That there was a whole, a whole process around it, and a yeah. whole yeah. sort of support of it. So just as a practical matter, we only have one flagpole, right? Right. <laughs> is that true in Montpelier? Is it on the same flagpole? Well, yeah. How do you fly two flags off of one flagpole? Well, well we have two flags. flags. We have yeah, the Vermont flag underneath. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have two flags. U.S. and Vermont. Okay. okay. Already have like one on the other. Well, it, it does seem like there should be a policy or at least an application or criteria. Like, you're probably going to keep the U.S. and the state flag up forever. Yep. Is there a point at which you would feel like this is accomplished and this flag can come right. down? Right. Or is it approved year to year? Yeah. We approve it for a 12 month period or a school year and then it's renewed based on the criteria. I don't know, I, I agree with you. Because uh, <laughs> I can think of 20 good flags to put up there. Not that this one isn't <laughs> right. very We'll run out of room eventually. And I was very yeah. proud yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I will check our policies. I don't know that we have anything about, I don't know the policies that intimately. To yeah, just, to just know probably not about them. flags, but there might be something about advocacy in, in general. Yeah, I don't remember anything specific to flags. Right. So those are all really good questions. Um, and I think this is going to be a big discussion, and it may be that we're not ready to make that decision in one board meeting. We need more information from them. We need more background. We need to figure out our own criteria. Um, so. Yeah, and they, and they hadn't really thought that through entirely, because when we talked prior to, and I, I think Lucy, you were here for that, they were talking about whether they should, if they get the approval to raise it, um, should it be in conjunction with some event here? Should it be a kickoff to event? Should it be the kind of the finale of an event? So, so they have more to think about as well. So it might be that it's okay yeah. to hold. I mean, I don't know what we're gonna do. And they, the, I think, I heard them say something about May. So that I think gives everybody a little bit of time. But I think we should we should all think about in the next week. Yeah. We have week one week, right? Um, criteria. And 
like the duration question, I think is important. Yeah, I think it is too, and approving it year to year might be a really good compromise for that. Then does it become a first come, first serve? Or uh, is there an open application process? Yeah. You know? I don't know. You know, it's kind of like the memorials that we used to have. Were you guys here? I don't know if any of you were here for that. When and why we had a memorial. When policy. students passed away and there were, you know, someone built a bench and then someone else did this and it wasn't that good and something else. Nothing happened for somebody else. Right. And mm -hmm. it took us a couple of years to come up with that policy. To the memorial Which is wall. now a memorial wall. Yeah. But that, the, kind of the same thing. Okay, um, board communication. Why don't we wait until next week since we have meetings back to back and we can do them together. Anything else? I won't be here next week. So I, have, I don't know if I'm here. I've got a conflict. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to check with George for sure. Make George come. Next week. I'd rather be here. <laughs> oh, cool. I, don't so know great if, I don't know how safe it is to extract myself from the other meeting. Because it's your job, right? <laughs> No, it's not my job. Oh, actually. okay. Um, motion to adjourn, 825. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot to do these correspondence, these oh. letters. Oh. I'm adjourn. Do those and. We just got them today, so they can go on the next Zoom in the next okay. meeting. Yeah. What are they? The they were letters from students um, talking about kind of climate change and U32's role in helping to. Yeah, if they could be that. emailed to us, that'd be great. Yeah, scan and email. So here are three new ones. No, these are the three that came from Bill at Washington Central, and these are the three I just opened. Yeah. And